Hi guys, this is Mark Sherry back with part two of my tutorial of how I put together my brand new single Music of the Earth which is out just now on Beatport. So in part one I showed you how that I managed to create the groove, the kind of tech trance groove uh, from the track using the kick drum, the different bass line layers that I had and also the different types of percussion that I used to create my grooves. Um, so as promised, this is part two, which is going to basically break down the breakdown for you. I'm, I'm going to show you the lead sounds that I use, uh, the pianos, the, the effects, the layers, the bass layers, um, just to show you how I managed to kind of get all the layers um, fitting into the mix so that there's nothing phasing, there's nothing clashing. Uh, just trying to make a really big sounding, uh, basically you're, you're trying to make a wall of sounds in the breakdown which is what I, I try and do in all my tracks like this, uh, you know, gravitational waves, uh, the pillars of creation. Um, so basically, I'll take things back to the start now. This is a very early version of the track. Uh, it's a very early Cubase project version. So obviously, as I as I go along, I always bounce down my MIDI parts to audio. Um, but as you can see, I've went back to an early version of this track and I've actually opened up the MIDI uh, channels to show you this, the synths that I use and also some of the automation and some of the effects that I use to, to try and really create a, a big sound in the breakdown. So let's take things back to the, the start of the breakdown. Um, as you can see, I'm using a Silent app right at the start here, so I'll play that and let you hear what's happening. I'm just going to flick through this to save a bit of time. I'll take it up here. Okay, so that's the, the main melody there. Um, I've only got one bit of automation running. You can see the, the line going from here to here. Um, now that's basically just controlling the cutoff filter, which is pretty much a quite a standard um, parameter that comes with all synths, just to, to keep things filtered at the start, and then you gradually open things up before the main uh, melody comes in over here. Now, I've actually got that sound. Um, as you can see, that sound is panned to the left by 35. Now I've got another sound to layer that with. It's another app from Silent, and you can see that I've panned one to the left and one to the right just to give each each sound its own space. Now I'll solo this app up as well and let you hear that. Bring them both in together. Okay, so that sounds good there. Now, the piano that I've used is the exact same piano that I used in Pillars of Creation. Now, on the, I really like Nexus from my pianos, but as you can see, I put a lot of processing on that uh, just to get the sound um, get it sounding right, nice and trancy and uh, nice and dynamic. Now I'm going to deactivate all the effects just to let you hear how, how bad the piano is on your own. So just keep this in mind when you're flicking through sounds, if you hear something and you think it's an okay sound but you know it needs a lot of work, then just remember that you can actually make average sounds sound absolutely amazing with the right effects. So, you know, you might flick, you might normally flick past this piano sound and think, oh, that, that's not a good sound. I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to move on to something else. So just to give you a, a gauge, then, you know, listen to how bad this piano sounds on its own. So it's pretty basic. It's quite plinky plonky, nothing very exciting about it. Now I'm going to play it again. And I'm gradually going to into, uh, go, sorry, going to add in the effects that I've used. Now the, the novel tech character wasn't actually used in this one, um, and I don't think the filter's going to come into play in this section of the track either. But I'm going to play it, and I'll gradually introduce each effect just to let you hear how big you can get pianos and other sounds sounding just by using the right effects. Okay.
So there you go, it's, it's not rocket science, it's quite straightforward. I've just used overdrive, some saturation from Isotope Trash 2, then I've got a nice reverb, nice delay, the filter as I said isn't being, it's not actually used there, and then a nice compression at the end of it. So as you can hear, as, you, well, as I've just shown you, you can make it sound really cool. So if I bring in the piano along with the two apps that I've just let you hear, um, and I've also got a Nexus bass pad, which is quite a quite a bog standard bass pad. There's nothing really exciting about it, but I'll, I'll leave all the exciting stuff to the other sounds because when it comes to bass and breakdowns, for me, it's usually just a case of having like a a filtered saw or something like that. So here we go. Okay, now going back to the bass sound, I've um, I've got a silent bass here, which now, as you can see, it's actually stereo. But in the in the, the mix later on, um, in the, the the later versions of this track, I've actually bounced it down to mono. Um, so and the bass pad as well. Now the bass pad in this section here, from here over to here, the bass pad is in full, but when this Bass, the rolling bass comes in, I've actually activated a high pass EQ which kicks in, which just trims the bottom end of the Nexus bass pad off so that it doesn't clash with the silent bass, the rolling bass which comes in here. So it means that you can play them both together and there's nothing interfering. Okay, now let's move things up the way. I'm going to show you the, the actual lead melody, which is from Spire. Now this is probably one of the nicest sounds I've, I've actually, for me personally, it's one of the, my kind of favorite tr uh, sounds that I've used in a track recently. I, I, I came across it, I tweaked it a little bit, made it sound quite kind of 80s. Um, I just felt that, you know, a lot of the trance these days, you always hear the same sounds and the breakdowns and the same kind of fast, arpeggiated leads and saw leads and all that kind of stuff so I was really determined to make this track quite like Pillars of Creation and come up with something completely different in the breakdown that I've not really heard in many other tracks uh, I've heard them in, in, in tracks in the in the past you know like maybe a, a few years ago but nothing recently so this is the sound that I came up with and I've also used uh, this parameter here the modulation parameter which you can actually see of if you put R on, it reads the automation that I've already done. Um, and I can quickly show you the automation. So you can see here, uh, that controls the modulation wheel on Spire. And you can actually see it coming into play at the end of each phrase on the melody. So I'll just play this to you on its own. Gives it a kind of 80s sound. It's a bit like a for me. It's like an old sci-fi, uh, like a sci-fi film or an old 80s arcade game or something, which I, I thought was really cool. It's quite different. Now I've also layered this lead sound with another lead, which is quite similar. It's kind of 80s sounding as well. It's not loud in the mix, and it's not doing anything. The only job it's doing is really adding a bit of character and a bit of, a bit, I suppose, a bit more uh, dynamic to the lead. Now, I'll play it on its own, but as I said, it's not loud in the mix. It's, it's just there and no more. And I've also put, like, a panning effect on it. So it pans from left, pans to right, maybe, like, two or three times over the space of eight bars. So I'll play it on its own and let you hear that as well. Okay, so that's a nice sound. You can see that I've already bounced that down to audio because I was happy with it. I was, uh, you know, I'd, I'd put effects on it and I wasn't really going to do anything else with that sound, so I've just bounced it down to audio. Now, when I lay it up with this sound, it just thickens it up slightly and just makes, makes the sound more uh, dynamic, as I said. Okay. 
So if I bring all of them in together now, I'll bring the two apps in. Sorry, my hand's starting to shake here because I'm holding this phone. Uh, bringing the bass pad and bringing the bass line down the bottom. I've still got two apps up the top here to explain to you, but let's hear what we've got so far. Okay, so the last two apps I've got to show you. Basically, these are more now. Th these are more traditional style apps. You know that, that you hear them quite a lot in uh, a lot of the uplifting trance and tech trance and stuff. But I wanted them in there because it, for me, I, I could have probably kept everything that you've just heard there. I probably could have got away with just leaving the breakdown like that, like not adding in anything else. But for me, it just sounded as if the melody was a bit laboured. It needed something kind of fast and jaggy and arpeggiated in there. So this is where. I went back to the drawing board and I went through all my sounds and did like a separate MIDI pattern just to speed things up a bit and make it sound a bit more uplifting. So that this is what I came up with. Now these sounds, I've done the exact same with the other two apps as I've done with, 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 sorry, I've done the same with these apps as I did with the other two. This one here, as you can see, it's slightly panned to the left, and this spire is slightly panned to the right. So again, it just gives you a wide, uh, some a wide feel to the, the track and some nice stereo imaging. Uh, so once you bring these all in together, you basically get what I was talking about, a big, nice big, um, like a wall of sound. So there you go, that's basically the guts of the breakdown. And one thing I did just at the end here, I took the Spire lead, and as you can see in here, I've just, Autumn, if you go to, instead of having velocity, just click this to, where are we? Sorry, pitch bend. And then you'll see that I've just basically done a pitch bend. Now I just use my MIDI, MIDI keyboard, which is down here, I just basically hit record and just do that and it goes down the way and then once you get the actual information on the screen then you can basically grab your line and then just draw it in like that just to tidy it up but obviously I'll just undo that um, because this has already been done so I've just done, this is the pitch bend that I was telling you about at the end here which I thought sounded really cool Now very quickly, I'm just going to close this project down, I'm going to save this up and then I'm going to go into the latest version which is here for tutorial. I'm just going to talk to myself for a minute. Now this version is the latest version, now, every single element in here I've basically bounced down to audio. Now some people ask me why I do this. I suppose one of the main reasons I do it is because imagine you have a really, really bad computer crash or you maybe lose a hard drive, then you know you've got everything backed up. I've got a separate drive and a separate folder that I do. I put all my mix downs into the folder. So if basically if the shit hits the fan, you've got everything saved in there, you've got a full backup folder with all your audio in there. You're not going to open up a Cubase project and discover that all your effects have vanished or you've maybe lost and lost some synths or some channels have been deleted and you're basically having to start from scratch, you know. So that's basically why I bounce everything down to audio. Now I can basically open up this full project um, and I can go to the breakdown again, which is over here. And I've basically basically got everything here, which you just heard earlier on, except it's, it's all in audio now. Uh, and I can let you hear the drop.
very quickly I'll just let you hear the sounds that are in the drop uh, there's quite a lot of stuff going on, I've got the techno stabs that I, I told you about in part 1 Then I've got these other stabs which I've cut, cut dry There's an acid sound comes in So there we go guys, thanks a lot for listening, um, I'm going to try and really promise myself to get into the habit of doing more of these for you, uh, because I, I think it's really important that I share some of my, my secrets with you guys, it will hopefully keep you inspired, give you some ideas on how to put your tracks together, um, so leave some comments, I'm going to upload this to Facebook and YouTube, and if you like the track that you've been listening to, then it's out now on Beatport, and I'd really appreciate your support on this one. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers.